Welcome back to another episode of The Faces of Rokor. Hands down, one of the strangest shows on the internet right now. Before we begin this episode, I'd like to just say thank you to you. Because this isn't my show. This is our show. This is a place where you and I can look at the faces of Rokor and learn from them. So please, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel just yet, right here at the bottom, you'll see a little button that says subscribe. Click on that right now because you do not want to miss a single episode in 2020 of our show, The Faces of Rokor. Today is January 6th, 2020, Christmas Eve. Today is also the birthday of Metropolitan Hilarion, first hierarch of the Russian Orthodox Church abroad. Now, what could we say about Vladika on his birthday? I'm not going to sit here and praise him up and down because that wouldn't be right. He's a monk. But I'd like to share with you five very, very short stories about Vladika, specifically about the way that he treats people. The first story was told by my grandfather, Father Proto-Presbyter Valeri Lukyanov. He gave this sermon just a few days before his death in 2018, when Vladika was celebrating the 10th anniversary as first hierarch of Rokor. And this is what my grandfather had to say about Vladika. Не было ни одного свободного места. Мы приехали из Нью-Йорка поздно. Я, конечно, к Владыке говорил, Владыка, где можно переночевать? Он мне говорит, да не беспокойтесь, у меня в Келии. Поднялись мы на его Келию, там какая-то койка маленькая. На этой койке, койке я ночевал. Утром я узнаю, что Владыка Ларион спал в типографии до полу. Это первый иерарх. Вот это начальник. Вот это первый иерарх. Вот это начальник. I will never forget those words as long as I live. But the story that my grandfather told happened in the 70s. Is Vladika really still the same? Has the office of first hierarch really not affected him in any way? Let's fast forward 45 years to 2019. I'd like to introduce you to Father Archimandre Niktari from Mexico City. Father Niktari was traveling from Istanbul to Mexico City in June, and he wanted to make a stop in New York City to visit Metropolitan Hilarion. This is what happened to Father Niktari. First of all, Vladika Kirill, my Archbishop, blessed me to come through New York on my way back to Mexico. And I said, I will, I, I want to stay overnight because it's a long trip for me. I want to stay overnight at the Synod if the Metropolitan blesses me. And my Archbishop said, okay, do it, just write him. So I sent him a message and knowing that he travels so much. So I said, no, he will not be here. Um, but he responded me immediately and he said, uh, Father Nectari, it will be an honor to be with you and a joy to celebrate with you Sunday liturgy. I will find uh, a room for you no worries, and uh, just uh, let me know uh, the time you are arriving. Because I told him the date, but not the time. And I, immediately before getting into the plane, I sent him a message and I said, uh, Vladika, I will be arriving at midnight. And he said, uh, okay, no problem. And I said, Vladika, but it's very late. And my experience with Synod is that they close the door before nine and there's nobody there. 
I mean, you could be ringing the bell or knocking the door, but nobody will hear, nobody will go down the stairs to open. And he said, don't worry, I will open for you. And I said, Vladika, you don't have to do it. It's very late. It's midnight. I could be a little bit later than midnight. I don't want you to do it. And he said, don't worry, father, I will do it. I will be happy to do it. I will wait for you. So as soon as I arrived, I, I called him and he responded. He said, Father Nectari, are you coming? And I said, yes, I am already in the taxi. Uh, I'm going there. It was 11.40 uh, at night, almost midnight. And uh, he said, what time would you be arriving? And I said, exactly midnight, I think. He said, I'll, I'll be there. So uh, I couldn't say any more because how could I tell the head of the church abroad, who is such a humble man, who is such a kind soul, how could I say, no, don't do it. You don't have to do it. He wants to do it. What can I say? So I just, uh, I felt humbled by his attitude. And then he came out and helped me with one of my uh, carry-ons. And I said, Vladika, it's very heavy. He said, yes, things are very heavy when we travel. We, I know. No worries. Then he said, uh, you are staying in my apartment in one of the rooms because I want you to be comfortable with me. So we got into the room and everything was set up. The, the bed, a clean town, the restroom, everything was there and uh, Vladika said, uh, Father, if you want to eat something, and I said, no, Vladika, it's late. It's late. Uh, it's after midnight. I shouldn't eat anything. Yes, but you were traveling. Uh, you don't have to serve because you are really tired. And I said, no, I must serve, Vladika. If you bless me, I will. He said, at nine? Yes, I will. At um, eight, I hear Vladika and uh, he asked me about my schedule and I told him and I said hey, Vladika I wanted to talk to you would you have now some time he said for you yes so we sat and we were talking for half an hour we celebrated liturgy together after that he said father uh, we have trapeza you have to join us for trapeza and now there is a key to my apartment for you to, to stay here until the end of your trip. So this is our Metropolitan. I don't know what it is about that story. I think the beauty of that story is in its simplicity. But the fact that Vladika went out of his way to put up just a humble priest from Mexico City says a lot about him as a person. However, you could say that these last two stories were about priests. And of course Vildeka would be nice to them. Of course he would treat them in a special way. But what about your average parishioner, your average babushka in church? How does Vildeka treat them? They were just actually in New York. Житейский. Владыка собирал эти вещи, ходил по Нью-Йорку и раздавал этим несчастным старушкам. И он столько сделал добра, тихонько, тихо, красиво, молча, добросердечно, что мы этого никогда не забудем. But okay, these are бабушкас, they're faithful parishioners, who doesn't love their babushka? But what about just an average person on the street, someone who's not even orthodox? This next story is told by Metropolitan Hilarion himself, 
A few weeks ago, I went to see him so that he could sign the books for the winners of the book giveaway in episode 6. And while Vodika was signing these books, he brings out an envelope and he says, well, since you're mailing these things, can you mail this for me? And this is the story that he told me about that envelope. This says a lot about Vodika as a person. This is a black man met me on the street. He, he, he said, what church are you? He said, where can I uh, buy a chotki for somebody in Romania? He went to a monastery in Romania and he was so moved that he uh, wants to send them a gift. So where can I buy a, a prayer rope? I said, it's not easy. We have a store, but it's closed on Sunday. So I, I t gave him one of mine, very new ones, nice green one. So this, I need to send him. And the final story for today is about the way that Vladika treats children. This past September, my daughter Angelina wanted to make a special gift for Vladika and Father Tsikhan as we were going to the skeet. We had planted cucumbers over the summer and she was determined to bring homegrown cucumbers to Vlodika. So we come to the skeet, we're singing liturgy, and unfortunately Vlodika wasn't there that day. And this greatly upset my daughter. But she ended up giving the cucumbers to Father Tikhan and told him to pass it along to Vlodika. And I thought, that's it, you know, end of the story. A few days go by, and I get this email from Vlodika. Dear Angelina, thank you so much for your gift of homegrown cucumbers. <clears throat> Today I made a salad with the cucumbers. Sorry I wasn't there when you visited the skeet. Hope to see you soon. Greetings to your mom and dad and your little brother. Metropolitan Hilarion. Can you imagine that? The first hierarch of the Russian church abroad is sending a letter to a three-year-old child thanking her for cucumbers. Right now, my daughter doesn't realize how significant that little email was, but I hope that when she grows up, she'll look back and she will remember and she will value and appreciate what you and I have right now in Vladika. Because what's the point? Why am I sharing all of these stories with you? For that, we go back to my grandfather. Take it away, дедушка. И поэтому сегодня чествуя Ладыку Илариона, мы все должны понять и радоваться, кого нам дал Господь Бог. Да, братья и сестры, мы многое достигли в жизни, много мы стремились. Но Владыка Иларион из всех нас имеет одно чудесное качество. Он прост, он прост, может быть, простым человеком. Желаю, чтобы мы, православные люди, смотрели на таких начальников, старались бы хотя бы в какой-то степени их жизни. И только тогда обретем истинную простоту, без которой жить невозможно. This simplicity, this love, this is Rocor. And this is what you're supporting when you donate to Rocor through the Fund for Assistance. So on behalf of all of us, on behalf of you and me, dear Metropolitan Hilarion, thank you. Thank you for being our Vladika. And thank you for watching this show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The button's right there. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. And it is Christmas Eve. So on behalf of everyone at the Fund for Assistance, Merry Christmas. Christ is born. 
glorify him.